Hello everyone, we are today at the Panzer Museum Munster and we are here with Tobias, who is a former Leopard 2 gunner. And the question will probably arise or arise to me for, for some time, why is there wedge armor on the upgraded Leopard 2s, so basically on the A5 and A6 and further ones, in, at the turret? Because if you look at World War II, for instance, Famously for the Panther, this was basically a shot trap only for, also for the pre-production uh, turret for the King Tiger. So what is different now? Is the ammunition different? Is there some special technology in these batches that prevents any shot traps? Or, or what is the cause for this? The biggest difference is the types of ammunition used mainly today. When you see in the World War II, you had solid AP rounds, sometimes with ballistic caps, sometimes without. In the early Cold War you had also hash rounds, but uh, today you have mainly only APFSDs, these uh, dart kind of projectiles, and you have also the heat FS. For example, in the Leopard it's called MZ, that's the shaped charge, and these rounds uh, work completely different. For example, the shaped charge will go off uh, in the moment it hits and will go straight into the armor, like uh, on the same angle as it was hit. So it's, it's, like, it's like a Panzerfaust round. Heat is basically a high explosive anti-tank and it creates a, a jet of molten um, metal to a certain degree and explosives. And it's important here, it doesn't burn through, it basically glides through the penetration. From what I know, it's so fast that it basically treats like a fluid. So we have like, like this ex extreme penetration going on and AP, AP DFS is armor piercing discarding sable. Fin stabilized. And, and with F, yeah, it's fin stabilized. So it's basically you have a big round, but then out comes a dart. And this is also the reason that the sable part flies away. This is why you have to clear for friendly troops that they're not in the way, else they might get hit by the parts from the ammunition. Yes. And the thing is with APFSDS, it doesn't bounce off. It, um, Normally it shatters. If it hits an angle where it can penetrate, normally it completely shatters. But uh, when it penetrates, it doesn't uh, uh, tend to turn away like a solid AP that you can see on some hits with uh, other tanks that you can see like the carving out. It uh, tends more to go into the armor in an uh, effect that's called normalization. And therefore there is no such things like a shot trap in modern time. So, and what if you would shoot with a regular AP ammunition at this? It, it would it, it's still not used anymore, so it's no problem. Speaking of different, here is a word from today's sponsor, our own publishing house, which exists thanks to all of you. We have a new book coming out, namely Achtung Tiger by Peter Tank Archive Samsonov. It looks at the tiger's survivability on the battlefield from a Soviet and Western ally perspective using primarily original sources from the time period. To celebrate the occasion, from 23rd April to 5th May 2024, Achtung Tiger is 15% off, whereas all our other books are 10% off. Also keep in mind that this is your last chance to get the limited edition of Tank Assault, the translated Soviet manual on tank combat, which will disappear from the store at the end of the sale period. After that, only the regular edition will be available. So this is your last chance to pick up the limited edition. You have to think about which tanks are using solid AP still. I mean, there is for the current generation of MBTs, there is no solid AP, neither for the Russian generation tanks uh, or the uh, late Soviet ones or the NATO tanks. No one is using a solid AP. The only tanks that are available currently that can use them is like T-54, T-55. They still have them available. But even T-55 is using APFSDS or APDS without fin stabilized. And uh, in a situation and you're talking about uh, 50 years difference, it's like uh, talking about uh, that the Panzer II would attack a Pershing tank. This is, uh, I mean, there's the Leopard in many other ways, like uh, in its maneuverability, its optics, that should even out this risk of getting the t this hit. And and this wedge armor, I'm not sure if it's classified or not, so um, is, this is basically add-on armor at, at, at the front now. And it's particularly made against um, heat and APDSS or, or against what kind of threats? I mean, the thing is that the Leopard itself had like three generations of armor. And uh, 
when this uh, wedge armor was added, it was already the last generation of armor that the Leopard received. And with this wedge armor, this armor was further increased and especially uh, against heat because the newest generation of Russian anti-tank missiles, we are talking about the, like Cornet, for example, and those are pretty dangerous even for a Leopard. And uh, this is a big increase of protection because you have a big distance that the, the jet of the heat must travel until it reaches actually the turret. Ah, so it's a, a lot, it's mostly spaced armor. Yes. Okay. So, so the, the upgrades from the Leopard, basically the, the Leopard Zero to A3, that was the, that was a, then every Leopard was upgraded to the A4. So yes. the, the A4 is the, is the, is the one with the, with the flat front. And then this is the A5, this is the first one with, with the wedged armor in front. Yes, and you have to know that uh, the most Leopards, even the A7s ones that are around, majority of them were previously A4s and even older that got converted. You can uh, spot them very easily, for example, at the turret on the left side where the loader hatch is. You have like a welded spot where uh, a hatch was that was already removed with the A4. And the A4 was, when was it introduced? It was still in Cold War, right? Yes, yes. It's, I think, 82, 81, uh, around early 80s. It was roughly around the same time when East German Army received T-72s. Okay. So 82, yeah. We, we still use them in the Austrian army, but they will get an upgrade soon, as far as I heard. So um, anything else to say about the Wedge Army? Because is there any other tank that uses such an armor upgrade, actually? Because I would say Merkava. Merkava, OK. You have this, like, uh, the old generation of Merkavas with the turret that you can see clearly. And then you see this. Uh, Mm. We are shaped ones with add-on armor. Then, uh, obviously, uh, on a similar degree, the Russian tanks with uh, ERA. Ah, yeah, but with explosive on, reactive armor. On a shaped uh, form, especially TADU, for example. And uh, even starting with T-64BV with Contact 1 armor, it's also like uh, on a wedge shape. Mm. But, but in that sense that it's non-explosive reactive armor, it's just the Merkava? I would only think of the Merkava in this case. I mean, yeah. On the turret itself, yeah. I mean, you can see like non-reactive armor upgrades for other tanks as well. But uh, I would say with, on this style only with the Leopard and it's uh, like um, copies like the Swedish one. So for me, I, I'm just a bit puzzled, but I might be wrong here. So it seems the Leopards were upgraded with such kind of armor, but for instance, the, the Abrams, the American ones, not the M1. I mean, the Abrams um, is a different thing. Like, I, I think you know that the domestic used Abrams are using a de depleted uranium armor in the turret to receive a further upgrade. The export Abrams don't have that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it seems like the Americans went with the depleted uranium and the, we Germans here took the wedge because to get a new level of protection. Ah, I forgot that depleted uranium is also used as armor. I always thought about it in the, in the ammunition, but not in the armor itself. Yeah. But, so, and what does the Challenger use? Mm, I think it's Dorchester armor. I mean, I'm not a big expert about the British tanks. I'm more uh, with my Germans and uh, mostly Russian tanks where I'm focused on. But uh, you have there also this like a theater entrance kit, how it's called, or these uh, prototypes like Megatron that you can see in Bovington, where they have all kinds of extras stripped to the vehicle, making it extremely heavy, but increasing the protection to a certain degree where it's uh, needed. And uh, I think it came all because of the same reasons, new ATGMs, new APFSDs, and to upgrade the tanks that were developed uh, during 70s, 80s. Okay. Anything else to add? Well, yeah, there's one thing to add that uh, not only the wedges are on the front, but you also can see them on the side of the turret. These like ears that you can even um, fold out on the A6. Ah, yeah. And they also uh, increase the protection value to a certain degree from the sides. Ah, you 
you can move the yeah out. you have like this uh, you, you have to unscrew it and yeah. then you can have uh, fold it up and uh, normally uh, some stuff is stored inside it behind it but you can uh, unfold it but this increased the protection even to uh, certain degrees. I mean, it's not that effective if you shoot directly from the side, yeah. but we are talking more about like angles from 30 degrees to the side to increase the protection there as well. So it's not only the front, but also like these two parts on the side. Okay, perfect. Yeah, you don't have to see And it. one thing uh, that is uh, to add about it is um, what had to follow about it. I mean, we are talking about the wedges of the KMW Leopards. They are also Rheinmetall Leopards. They have a similar system, but it, it's in that kind different that in the KMW Leopards, the optic was raised to a higher level. Normally it was lower in the turret, and this had to, um, to be done to allow the wedge mounting directly in front of the gunner. And uh, following to this, uh, we saw other modifications like that the periscope of the commander had to be raised to look over the optic. And also um, we can see, for example, at the Leopard 2A6, that the um, optic, this, um, not the main gun optic, but like the auxiliary optic, is also raised uh, to the top of the turret. And uh, those are modifications that had to be done in favor to mounting this. Okay. So it's not like just uh, stripping these wedges on an A4 to make it, but you need uh, more modifications for it. Um, minor thing to add, this is technically not an A5, a Leopard 2 A5. That is, this is the Truppenversuchsmuster, the troop trial pattern, basically, <laughs> or model, if it uh, tra uh, tra um, translates directly. So it's basically yeah, a trial version for the troops to see, okay, this, does this concept work? In, in real life, and there's of course some minor differences to the A5. From, from the outside, I think it looks very similar. You, you were on an A5, I think? A6. A6, yeah. A6, uh, A6 is, uh, was my first tank I was on, and it's basically like an A5, but with the longer, the longer gun. gun yeah. But the biggest difference that we have here on this tank, where you can visually easily spot it, is the add-on Hull Armor. Because uh, this was only a thing on the German Leopards from the A7 we on. I mean, the Swedish Leopards had it, but the Germans not. Okay. Okay. Then, thank you very much, Tobias. Thank you to the Panzermuseum Munster for inviting us. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.